Okay, so we are starting a program here to help people who we are working with to understand just some simple editing workflows. So this is the Angel of Final Cut Studio training, and it's going to cover things from capture to simple editing. So let's begin. Okay, so on the upper right, we have three icons. Number one, Macintosh HD, which is our actual HD. For the purpose of this tutorial, though, we've created a pretend Mac HD, which we have down here, and eight other, that's the external drive. But what we're going to do now is ultimately set up a project file, and that must always be stored in the Mac HD. So, first thing we're going to do is open up the Mac HD, control click to create a new folder, and we're going to create a folder called FCS for Final Cut Studio. Okay, so now we're going to create another folder called Angel of. FCS training video and we're going to put ALRE at the end and that's our naming convention that we use to be able to globally find all assets related to that company. Then we're going to take the folder we just created and drag and drop it right into the FCS master folder. Typically this folder will have a number of folders in it associated with whatever projects we're working on. Okay now I'm going to create another folder called Angel of Red Carpet Event number 21 in this instance, I'm just going to use the naming convention ALRE. Then I'm going to drag it into the FCS folder. This is just to give you an example of how you could have multiple projects within one FCS folder. Following this workflow is absolutely critical because Final Cut Pro has been coded to ultimately function best in this configuration. So the project file must always go into the Mac HD, that is the internal drive, now we're going to perform Capture Scratch. That's taking the footage that we have filmed, either on tape or digital formats, and turning that into a usable Final Cut Pro file. Okay, so now we're going to go into Final Cut Pro and launch that. So here's Final Cut Pro, and we're going to create a new project file. Alrighty, so down here we're going to go to Angel of Training Video. We're just going to drop it down in here. As a matter of fact, and we're going to create a new folder. And I'm just going to create a file called Angel of Model Health Editions on this date. I'll just copy this, create a new folder, type, uh, just copy that in there, and there it is right there. Okay, so this is going to be where all of our projects related to the auditions are going to go right in here. And then we may have them organized in various forms from initial audition to callback and then final bookings. So now we'll click on the folder and then ultimately save the file in there. So as you can see up here at the browser it says ALRE Auditions Model Health 080811. ALRE Auditions right here. We double click that and we see in a timeline down below there's nothing in it, there's nothing in the viewer, and there's nothing in the canvas. The way how Final Cut Pro is organized is by browser, it's this window to the left, where you browse as it implies to find the files. To the right of that is the viewer, that's where the original file is then brought into when you double click it from the browser. It goes over here to the canvas where the mouse is, and that's where you actually see what's in the timeline, which is where we do our editing. Okay, so now we're going to do something called Login Transfer. It's found in the File menu directly to the right of Final Cut Pro. And we just come down here, we're going to choose Log and Transfer. Now that's because we have digital data that we're going to be transferring into usable Final Cut Studio data. So when choosing Log and Transfer, you see a window comes up that is called Log and Transfer. Okay, the next step is very important. We are now going to capture the raw files and turn them into usable Final Cut Pro files. But an important step before we can do that is determining exactly where those files are going to end up. And that must be on an external drive in order for Final Cut Pro to work at its very best. So to do that, we're going to select that particular function by choosing Command 8. Now a prompt comes up and says, unable to initialize video deck, you may still log offline clips or use Capture Now. So what we're going to do is click through that. If you're using a deck, then you can go ahead and use that deck. We are using a digital workflow, so all we need to do now is determine exactly where the files are going to go. On the upper right of the three tabs, there's a little tab called Capture Settings. We're going to select that, 
and then come down to Scratch Discs and select that. Okay, so now we're going to determine exactly where the Final Cut Pro Documents folder is going to go. We're going to choose Set, and we're going to choose Eight Other, and on Eight Other, regardless of what's here, at the very top level, we need to create a new folder. And in this new folder, we're going to type Final Cut Pro Documents and make sure that you capitalize each word. After we're done typing, we're going to choose Choose. Verify that all the right information appears at this top line, which it has, and we're going to set OK. OK, now we're getting ready to log and transfer. Before we do that, we need to create a new folder that we're going to transfer files to. Now we're going to go back to the original raw folders and copy the name exactly as it was written on that raw folder and paste it in Final Cut Pro on the folder bin, replacing the word bin for the words on that folder. So we're going to replace the word bin with the actual folder name exactly as it was typed. So once again, the raw files were saved on 8other. We're going to look under ALRE Raw Model Health, and we're going to choose this name, highlight it by double-clicking it, Command-C to copy it, and come back over here to Final Cut Pro, choose bin number 2, and paste it using Command-V, and there you go. There's exactly the title, exactly as it was written, and this is very important because you don't want any chance for the file name to be changed because that's how it's going to be able to locate it again. And that way there's no confusion if others come on board the project and need to look for the file, it's going to be named exactly in the way that it was on the original raw file. So you're going to choose this, control click. I'm going to set logging bin. Now we've determined exactly where the files are going to be converted to. Now let's go back up to Command Shift 8 to log and transfer. That brings up the log and transfer window. He's actually once a firefighter, a real, real American hero in my opinion, and we look forward to working with this gentleman. On the left hand corner, you see these various thumbnails from the different people who participated in the project. While allowing this top one to be selected, Scroll this down to the last one, hit shift and then click, and then all the files will now have been selected. We're going to now capture that to Final Cut Pro Logging Bin, which was titled ALRE 052011 Audition 11. Now that we've selected all the files, we're just going to add selection to Q. We're going to click on that. And you can see on the lower left, there's a little wheel spinning in the status. And there's a little timeline bar directly below Add Selection to Queue. And in that situation, it's giving us kind of like a running timeline how long it's going to take. This takes a bit of time, but it's converting the files into usable Final Cut Pro files, as I stated. And we'll take a little break now until it's done. See you in a bit. Okay, so we've moved the screen slightly, but as you can see over here, and the, this is our boom pole. Here's the now line. This is going to disappear here in a few moments. It just disappeared. And there's two more clips that got to go. One is 30 seconds in length and the other is 23 seconds in length. So once those have all been logged and transferred, we're then going to do some very simple cuts only editing techniques that are going to allow us to make an evaluation of the footage we have. In this instance, that footage is audition tapes. So. It's a relatively simple editing process and therefore sufficient for our purposes. Now for other associates of mine who just want to do assembly edits, which is a simple cuts only edit typically, where they could put stuff on their screen or put stuff where they can put content into a timeline and prepare what they feel is the best possible takes. Therefore, the producer is able to put together what they think is the best possible takes and then allow an editor to come in and perform the edits that they require based on the selection that they've already made. That's a really efficient manner by which producers or directors can ultimately get the content prepared for editors who are coming in to edit. So now we've stopped and as you can see all the items have been completed in the login transfer. So we're going to go ahead and close that window. And then we'll come up here to the top screen and double click that. And there we have this gentleman appear in the viewer window. Now at this point, we're just going to pull over the entire audition without really doing any edits. 
We're going to make sure that the audio is up, and let's take a listen to him. So, um, tell us your name. We'll do a little commercial for you. So, tell us your name, your dream role, and how people can get hold of you. My name is Al Katus. My dream role is one of the guys in Fast and Furious. I want to play one of the cops, drive real, real fast cars, catch the bad guys. That's, that's what I want to do. You can catch me, find me at Al Katus at Yahoo.com, or find me on Twitter at Al Katus. Simple as that. Easy to find. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. So there you have it. So we're just going to drag that over to the right. So we'll choose this. Here's Al. We choose overwrite. But the prompt came up. It said, for best performance, your sequence and external video should be set to the format of the clips you are editing. So we're going to say yes. And at this point in time, this clip is going to appear down here in the sequence matched exactly to the clip settings as the content was filmed in. You can see that the clip has appeared in the timeline window. You could play it a number of ways. You could just simply click in the timeline and drag it any way through by touching initially in this grayed out area up at the top. You can play this clip in a number of ways. 